please record it. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to be reading 1 Samuel 23, verses 4 starting at verse 4. And the word of God reads, Once again, David inquired of the Lord, and the Lord answered him, Go down to Kil Kil Kila, where I am going to give to the Philistines to the Philistines men the Philistines, and I'm going to give the Philistines into your hand. So David and his men went to Keilah and fought the Philistines and carried off their, with their livestock. He inflicted heavy losses on the Philistines and he saved the people of Keilah. And the word of the Lord is completely blessed. Amen. Father God, we just bless you on this evening, O oh God. We invite the Holy Spirit in, O oh God. Invite the Holy Spirit, O oh God, so it can touch all that's on the study line, O oh God. Open up our hearts and our minds to receive the lesson that you have for us to learn, O oh God, so that we can bless others with it, O oh God. We lift up the bringer of the word, O oh God, the teacher on tonight, O oh God, asking, O oh God, that you bless him, O oh God, and that we all are open and receptive. These things we pray for and give thanks for in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So question, does anybody remember what our focus is for discipleship? Mm. From last week. Is it love? Authentic discipleship. Is our focus at the church. Remember that? We have to be in yeah. relationship with one another. Right. And our and methodology. So there's Michelle. Michelle, what's our methodology? Well, we have to be in relationship with one another. And we have to do it in love. And we have to be in relationship with Christ. Amen. Amen. So we're going to move forward this week. I know we, we did a lot of um, talking last week about the subject matter, but the main focus of what we wanted to get across was that our purpose is authentic discipleship. And our methodology is relational. That means we do it through relationships. Can everybody see my screen? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> so we're going to start chapter two on tonight. And it's simply entitled, How to Start Growing People. Mm -hmm. so let me ask you a question if you want to make disciples where do you start with yourself <clears throat> okay get yourself who else the people you want to disciple your okay. house oh, I'm sorry okay go ahead. you start in your home okay by how you live Keisha, you like, like you seem like you want to say something. You start. You, you got to do some. Um, what is it? Reality. Where where are we really find out where the people that are going to be the disciples? What's their skill? What's their skill set? Their maturity level. So you can, because you may have to, maybe some training need to take place before they start discipling so, others. Yeah. So as so you know, we know it starts with us because we're disciples. Mm -hmm. And disciples allow uh, should be allowing themselves to be disciples. Amen? Amen. Amen. So even though you all are leaders, you're serving, you're worshipers, you should be allowing somebody somewhere to disciple you. Amen. So so then I was to, so I guess you could say you start with relationships or Amen. building relationships or starting Amen. relationships. Amen. Amen. So let's let's so let's look at the notes. Remember, it's our job to take people and help them move from mm. spiritual immaturity mm. to spiritual maturity. So what that lets us know right off the bat is that we need to be in the process 
of guaranteeing that we are spiritually mature. And I want you to write in your write in your notes. What does being spiritually mature look like to me? So the questions we may ask ourselves as we approach this, because we're, we're we're headed somewhere on tonight. We ask, where will we even stop? Start. What subjects should we cover? to help equip people to be able to accomplish this mission of discipleship? What teachings and programs do we cre create and implement to support the mission of discipleship? These are things that we have to ponder. And while we ponder those things, let us understand this. Discipleship is a journey that takes time and commitment. So it's going, so being a discipler is going to take some of your time and it's going to take your commitment. Allowing yourself to be discipled is going to take some of your time and your commitment. Do we understand that? Mm -hmm. And I really want us to grasp the fact as we engage the shift is that we have to be in tuned and committed to what God is calling us to do. The second bullet point, knowledge and skill should be imparted gradually with each year building on the previous. So what we impart into people, we should be willing to take it slow. And, and as we implement the, this, this disciple shift, there needs to be a plan as we engage, because we, we can't do we can't do everything in 2024. There has to be a plan for 2024. Are y'all with me? Amen. Any questions about that? No. <clears throat> as disciples mature and grow, more responsibility and knowledge can be entrusted to them. We don't give a new disciples the keys to the ship. Amen. Amen. I want, I want, I want y'all to understand that we don't, we don't, we don't have people coming to our church. It doesn't matter if it's whole, <laughs> if it's in Mississippi, if it's church without walls, we don't take a new disciple and make them the pastor. Hmm. There are going to be some problems because they should be going through a maturing process. And understand the next bullet point, advancement in discipleship is not solely based on intelligence or knowledge, but on overall development in key areas. Mm -hmm. Maturity should increase over time mm -hmm. as disciples have more opportunities to grow and develop. So we do understand, we're going to understand in this process, and some of we've talked about some of this process before. It's like growing up as a person. Mm -hmm. A disciple has to grow up as a disciple. So you wouldn't. So let me let me ask Keisha. You wouldn't put a baby in charge of any of your ministries, would you? I can't hear you on mute. You on mute? Definitely not. Definitely not. <laughs> but what happens in the church is that we are ready to throw babes in Christ into key positions either because we don't have people to fill them or because we are lazy. But we should give them opportunities to grow and develop. I, I'll take, I take for instance, our ministers, I hope, they have gone through a long, a pretty long growth process. Wouldn't you say, Michelle? Ray? Yes, Jen? Yes. You, you, go, you, go, you weren't sorry. just thrown you just weren't thrown into the fire. No, we've we've had lots and lots of training and there's so much more to come. Right. Because you need to know everything. And the thing about I'm, I'm gonna tell you the difference, like because I use Michelle as the example. When I did my trial sermon, I came into the office with a couple with a couple of sermons I wrote and you know, and then they scheduled a date. We didn't do that. The the books and the in the reading came afterwards, but what they got they got it beforehand. They're allowed to grow 
and to make mistakes and to have some good times and some rough times along the way so that they're able to handle it when they get there. So, so their maturity is increasing over time. And the same with disciples. We should allow them to mature <laughs> over time. Just like in school sports programs, discipleships follow a similar process of growth and development. Ray, you didn't just end up on varsity and basketball, did you? No. You had to go through a process, right? Yes. You, and we have to understand that there is a process that disciples must go through in the in this discipleship process. Christianity itself operates on the principles of progress and growth in discipleship. So we have to understand that. Are there any questions or concerns about the issue, some of the things we must understand? <coughs> All right. So we understand that it's a process. One class is not going to make a person a complete disciple. We understand that. Yes. And it requires our dedication and commitment too as well. <clears throat> now, as we move forward, it may appear unconventional to classify individuals based off of their spiritual development. We have this saying in the church, that we are not to judge others. And we may feel like putting people in a group is judging them. Well, let me say this. Let me just make this clear. It's okay to judge. We're just not to condemn. <clears throat> Y'all got that? Yes. But when we group people according to their spiritual development, we're not passing judgment on them. We're not passing judgment on their character or morality. We are, our aim is to assess their current level of spiritual maturity in order pro to provide the needed guidance and support for their growth. Y'all got that? Yes. Yeah. And so to make sure they can be successful. Yes. Because mm -hmm. you don't want, you, last thing you want to do is send someone out somewhere and they're not qualified and they're not qualified to go or they're not strong enough to go and they go and then they're eaten alive where they are mm, okay. by the people. Right. Or, or, so you just want to, it's best for them and you. Right. Okay. And you want to be able to explain that to people because some people may take it the wrong way. You're not categorizing them based off of their character or morality, but you're trying to gauge their current level of spiritual maturity so you can provide the correct guidance and support for them. Y'all got that? Yes. And Pastor, that takes humility to really do mm -hmm. a self-assessment and be honest with where you are and who you are. Yes. And we have to understand because we're all leaders on the line. Uh, we have to be able to evaluate where people are and where they stand along on this spiritual journey. So as pastors and overseers and leaders, you know where to come in with the uh, equipping. So, so you have to be able to gauge where people are spiritually. When the, when the leader is able to understand where people are spiritually in their growth, they can create an environment that is that that enhances or or stimulates growth, and and they they're able to encourage students as the student advances spiritually. So it is it's our mandate to be informed. So part of, and I know a lot of times we in the past we looked at discipleship as just being a class, but now we understand that we have to be involved. In what's going on, we have to we have to, we have to do some investment of ourselves mm -hmm. into what we're doing. We have to make some investment in the people so we understand where to come. Because what you understand is this: is that as you continue to lead, Keisha, as you continue to lead your church, you will be you will be implementing discipleship with people at different levels. 
Because you got to remember this, and I say this over and over again, I want you to grasp it. When we all come to the Lord, we have different levels of decay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so that's why we're all at, that's why we can't compare our walk to each other's walk, because we all came to God at a different level of decay, and we're all at different places in our walk. But what matters is that we're on our walk. So we have to evaluate what people are spiritually on their walk so we can serve them effectively. Y'all got that? Amen. By assessing an individual's level of spirituality, we can better understand where they are on their journey and we can identify where they need guidance and or encouragement. So, so, so we are, we, we, we're, we're assessing them not to talk about them. Amen. Amen. We're assessing them not to gossip about what's going on in their life, but we're assessing them so we can help them on their journey because it is, it is our job to offer guidance and encouragement. And if we are offering encouragement and guidance, we have to be at a place spiritually and within and with knowledge to be able to help them and be mind and be mindful of this is the same process jesus took the disciples through he mm -hmm. was he 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 mm -hmm. was he was constantly um address addressing where they where they were and then and and, and basically coaching and teaching them up and so we have to be mindful that that's the it's the same process that we should be taking right. taking taking with others and I, I and I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, Keisha, but I'm I'm, I'm gonna piggyback on what you said. He <laughs> did sorry. that. You know, it's, it's okay. It's okay. He <laughs> did that so they can look more and more like him. Mm -hmm. And what we do by the aid of the Holy Spirit is mm -hmm. done so that the believer begins to look more and more like him. Mm -hmm. Not more and more like Mosley, not more and more like Smith, not more and more like McIntyre, but we want the believers to look more and more like him. That's why we're here tonight. Yes. If we, if we didn't want the believer to look more and more like him, we could be front of our TV watching, doing what we want to do. Mm -hmm. But see, also understand this. I want you to say it to yourself. Intentional leadership. Intentional leadership. Intentional leadership. We should have intentional leadership. The intentional leader recognizes that each person has unique strengths, weaknesses, and experiences. It, it, when, when it comes down to it, 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 and I think it goes back to, from my whole missionary Baptist church people to the first thing everybody told me when I got to church. You have to know the people, know the people, know the people. And you know the people in such a way as you're attuned to the Holy Spirit that you understand their strengths and their weaknesses. And you can use their strengths while you build up where they're weak. Mm, amen. But that yet again requires your commitment. Amen. You can't pastor and lead. You can't, you can't pastor people if you're not committed to them. Mm -hmm. If you're not committed to the people and you're pastoring, you just they preacher. They, okay, as intentional leaders, you have to take into account that people have different backgrounds and different levels of understanding in the midst of the people that you're dealing with. Y'all got that? Mm -hmm. Yes. If you're dealing with children, you know, mm -hmm. young adults, adults, seniors, there are different, different backgrounds and different levels of understanding. And it is your job. I want you to, it's not in your notes, but you have, it is your job as intentional leaders to meet them where they are. It is your, your, your mandate to come alongside people. It is not their mandate to come alongside you. You as the discipler are to come along beside them. Meeting the need. Say that. Say that with me. Say meeting the need. Meeting the need. Now, now, now I'm gonna I'm 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 say this too. Meeting the need may be may mean that your first step in discipleship is buying them a meal. 
Mm-hmm. Getting them some clothes so that they're warm, making sure that they're safe. Because people can't hear the gospel if they're hungry. That's right. That's right. But 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 when we understand the different backgrounds and the different levels of understanding, this allows us to tailor their teaching and their and our teaching approach and create environments that stimulate their growth and foster a deeper understanding of Jesus Christ. Y'all with me? Mm -hmm. Any questions? So there must be intentional leadership. Any, any questions? We have to understand that discipleship is more than a 12-week class. It's lifelong. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, yeah. so discipleship, it never stops. Mm -hmm. as you speak of, uh, it, it's lifelong because as you speak of uh, um, spiritual maturity, and as like say at one of our recent lessons, and I'm sure many of you already know about uh, God's mysteries and his revealing more and more over time we can never know all that he knows it it as my brother-in-law used to say keep living you know um he yeah he, and 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 seeking you know to to know him if that's your or, or as your husband would say stay the course that's right that's <laughs> right so you have you, you have to stay the course mm -hmm. But it's a lifelong process. It's a, it's, it's, and, and, and when you look at it, it's a lifelong process on both sides. Y'all feeling me? Amen. As as the one being discipled, that's the li that's a lifelong process. And we are being discipled on one hand, and we are discipling others on the other. So both sides never stop. It's a lifelong process. And it's critical as disciplers to provide the proper atmosphere, resources, and opportunity for continued growth. This includes having access to relevant teaching. Mm. Encouraging participation in community activities and offering mentorship and support networks. And we also talked about on another time that discipleship and mentorship go hand in hand. Ultimately, <laughs> as we begin this voyage, voyage, it is our goal to help people. So being disciplers is helping them. We're helping them to develop a, a strong foundation of faith and a strong foundation of understanding while we equip them to navigate life's challenges and actively live out their belief. And check this out. If we're helping them to navigate life challenges, I want you to write this down. You have to be willing to share your testimony. Because um, let me let, let me let me let you know this: nobody can identify with a perfect Christian. Y'all mm -hmm. y'all might want to write that one down, because nobody can identify with somebody that is perfect. I had somebody tell me one time that oh they were so holy that Jesus came in their room and held them like a baby. Uh, I said, hold on, I say he never came in my room and held me like no baby. <laughs> So I'm so, okay, so, so holy. <laughs> so I, I, I ain't that holy way. He gonna come in and hold me. He ain't holding me. <laughs> and so if, if if people people have to be able to identify with you, you can't. What, what's the old saying? We can't be so heavenly minded. We ain't no earthly good. 
That's right. And people have to be able to identify. So, 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 so sometimes when I preach, I, I tell them this, this was my, I, I had some struggles. And so as soon as I say I had some struggles, Ray mm. can say, you know, I had some struggles, too. I can identify with Pastor. And Janice can say, I can identify. And Michelle said, I can identify. And Dave said, I can identify. I can identify with Pastor because I had some struggles. That's right. Uh, and I say, and say and Ray always says, we all have that sin that easily besets us. We all got that. We can all identify with that. Easily. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so the thing is, people need to be able to, to, to see you as real. Mm -hmm. As a real person, not just a Sunday morning uh, image. Mm -hmm. They got to see you as a real person that they can sit and talk to, tell their issues to, and understand that you're a real person that you can give them some real uh, applicable knowledge on how to handle it from a natural and fit and spiritual standpoint. Mm -hmm. That's how. That's the only way we're going to help people navigate life challenges. We got to keep it real. We got to be authentic. We can't forget where we came from. Mm -hmm. Not that we're going to glorify where we came from. Right. We can't forget where we came from. We can't forget the struggles. We oh, look, let, let, Let's keep it real on tonight. We can't forget when we was doing what we did back in the day. We can't yeah. forget about the gang banging, the drug dealing and all that stuff. We can't We can't forget about all that stuff. But we're not going to give it glory. We, yeah, we That's did right. deal with that stuff. But God, how many folks on the line tonight got a but God testimony? Oh, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what I'm saying is that other folks they need they need to hear about your butt God testimony. Mm -hmm. And so they say, okay, okay, now I know, I know that they, I know, I know Candace is real now. I know she she been she has she been through some stuff. Or somebody may be sitting there that went through the exact same thing you went through, and they're wondering how they're gonna make it through. Mm -hmm. And they say, oh man, I, Ray, I went through the same thing. Mm -hmm. How did you make it through? But mm -hmm. God, that's 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 where the door opens and you can begin to disciple them. Amen. As soon as folks think you're real, you got you got the open door. Mm -hmm. So we so we want to disciple them and, and help them navigate life challenges. But we have to recognize and we have to invest into their spiritual development. We can't just come to church and worry about getting ours. Woo! Hmm. I sound like McLeod, don't I? <laughs> yes, sir. Keisha, I sound like McLeod. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but but that but but we but we have but think about that. We have hmm. to recognize and invest in other people's spiritual development. So think about it, Janice. You didn't have your meeting on Saturday for vacation Bible school for yourself. No. You're investing and rec you're recognizing and investing in the children's spiritual development. Absolutely. It's all about them. Keisha, when you plan for your church, you're not planning for yourself. You are recognizing and investing in the spiritual development of the folks. Same okay. thing with Candace, same thing with everybody on the line when they get into their respective ministries. We got to mm -hmm. remember somebody, let, let, let me tell you something. Somebody is counting on you, Keisha, to be on that Zoom or to be on Facebook to do what you do with Church Without Walls. You see what I'm saying? Somebody is dependent on you. Somebody is dependent on each and every one of you to be the discipler God has called you to be. Yes. And that means you got to take some of your own time. Mm -hmm. And invest in somebody else during your own time. Yes. That's what called that's what being an authentic leader is all about. But we do this because our mandate, our goal, the reason why we're here is so we can be able to contribute to their overall well-being and positively imp impact their lives. Just think about it. Somebody depending, like, like we depended on somebody. Somebody prayed for us. Somebody dr drug us to church. Somebody, so, somebody pulled, pulled on us. So, so we people are depending on us to do the same for them. Mm -hmm. they, 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 they're counting on you, Ray, studying for Tuesday nights. Mm -hmm. Amen. Their lives may hinge in the balance. Their spirit, their, their, their final destination 
may up be up in the air. And God has given you the responsibility to give them a word that's going to change their address from hell to heaven. But I want you to understand, I'm, I now this is where Keisha come in now. Keisha, this is a Bible-based process. <laughs> the, 12, the 12 were ordinary men. That's where Keisha was going with this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Who experienced a significant spiritual transformation through their time with Jesus. Are y'all with me? Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. He chose them to be his followers. And he mm -hmm. spent time and, and they spent time with him. Mm -hmm. And they became more like him in character and purpose. Yes. That's our goal. This, this process, this, 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 this is not a new process. It's already in the word. But it's our mandate to bring people into the presence of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so important that we represent Christ well. Because when people are following you, and they and you 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 should be imitating and emulating Christ. And if you shaky, you un you immature, they'll pick up some of those same characteristics because they've been depending on you. And then now something that you should have been growing them from, now they didn't got the stamp of approval for it. Mm -hmm. Have you ever noticed how a church seems to emulate the character of their pastor? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If it's good or bad, they'll emulate the character of their pastor. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we have to be mindful because part of being authentic leaders, we are, we are going back to leadership one on one, is that a leader is an influencer. Mm -hmm. and, let, and let me take you back to the class on Tuesday. You know, leaders will be held accountable for what they do. We will have a stricter judgment. So it behooves us to do our best to be like him. So we can have other people be like him. See, I'm going to tell you something. I just believe like this at almost age 50 that I understand hell is real and tomorrow ain't promised. Mm. I'm going to say it again. Hell is real and tomorrow ain't promised. Amen. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I don't care, I, you know, I don't care if the people from Hope Mission Day Baptist Church are hanging from the chandeliers, sliding under the pews. After I preach, if God say I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm not moved, then something we got a problem. Amen. So the, the mandate is that God be moved, that Amen. God be that God be approved of what was just said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's about it's about following Him, not following the people. We have to understand that all of us, pastors and people, we are all in a process of spiritual growth. Yes. We are in a process of spiritual growth, regardless of the problems or issues that face us, that we face in life. And I want you to understand this too, in case somebody tells you, no one is going to reach perfection in this life. And we can and we can all. I want you to hear this experience periods of immaturity if we're not careful. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say that one more time. I'm going to highlight it here. No one reaches perfection in this life. And we can all experience periods of immaturity if we're not careful. So it behooves us to be careful. To avoid making mistakes. In assessing someone's maturity, it is crucial that to have to have a tool and the skills to accurately evaluate ourselves and those we're guiding. So first, we must examine ourselves. Mm -hmm. Ah, ah. So first, we must examine ourselves before we begin to examine other people. Mm -hmm. And we should use the same tools to examine ourselves that we use to examine others. We said this before, but placing someone in leadership without considering their maturity can lead the church in the wrong direction. Are y'all with me? Any questions on that? No. 
we have to understand that the amount of time spent in a church or the amount or the amount of time spent with the people does not reflect our true level of maturity. So you can be in the church 50 years and still be what? Immature. Mm -hmm. As an intentional discipleship maker, because we said we, are we have to have intentional leadership, but as intentional discipleship makers, we need to create an environment where those under our care can develop as believers. It is our mandate to aid them in their spiritual growth we are not here to label and categorize them. Discipleship is the responsibility of everyone, not just the pastor, not just the leadership. We got that? Questions? Uh, yes. Yeah, okay, Jen. Yes, it says, Pastor, um, a couple of minutes ago, you mentioned that uh, everyone's in the process of spiritual maturity. Yes. Um, it seems to me that um, I I might think that everyone, not everyone is, but again, please correct me where I'm wrong. Um, in the respect that some people, uh, let's say maybe more worldly people or people that are uh, in, in a more secular, you know, they're not interested. Some people that are just not interested. So I maybe... Everyone's not trying to grow spiritually. But they're because all in the process. The but but as, we, as we're going to see tonight, they're all in the process. Uh-huh. Because of God's work. Be yeah, because of the work. They, but it is, there are things that we have to do and there are things that they have to do. So now we have to figure out who's failing them. Is mm -hmm. it us failing them or them failing themselves? You kind of get what I'm saying? Right. And, 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 look, and look at this, what I'm about to say now, to go with that. Mm -hmm. Discipleship consists of three parts. I'm, I'm, let, me, let me make it a little bit bigger so everybody can see it. Ah, uh, thank you. Okay. Discipleship, discipleship consists of three parts. My part. Say my part. My part. This involves the things that I can do to assist someone on their spiritual journey. B, their part. It includes the individual's responsibility for personal growth. This is your part, Janice. If someone lacks interest or isn't willing to change, there's little I can do. Right. They must have a desire and a hunger for transformation. Mm -hmm. C, God's part. Ultimately, God is responsible for bringing about lasting spiritual change. He is the one who transforms lives. As leaders, we must understand our role in light of God's work. Be patient and trusting in his plan and timing while remaining open to the opportunities he provides. So the only part of, disciple, of, the, of the discipleship making process is my part. A. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, if we're being disciple, we're B. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's yeah. nice. Y'all got that? That, that? That's straightforward. Is there, is that, is that, the only part that, you know, in the, if, as a discipler, is your part. Mm -hmm. You can't do their part, and you can't do God's part. Mm -hmm. We got, does everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. So you can bring a horse to water, but you cannot make them drink. Amen. Amen. Because, 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 see, on that good old day of judgment, God's just gonna ask you, "Did you do your part?" Mm -hmm. He's gonna be like, "Moses, did you, did you, did you bring Hope Missionary Baptist Church to the water?" I said, "Yes." Mm -hmm. all, all he can say is, "Well done, thou good and faithful servant." Now then, he now, next he gonna ask Ray Smith. Now, Ray, did you drink the water? Well, you know, no. I thought Pastor was gonna take me to the to to the to the one in Hop Hall. I was gonna drink from the one in Hop Hall, but not Central Ice Lip. Okay, I can't make Ray drink. 
All I can do is bring him to the water. But see, guess what? If he's thirsty enough, he's going to drink from the water in Central Iceland. Right. And God can inspire that. So there are any questions on this one? The three parts. I just I, I just have a comment. Okay. Um, and, and my part, my part meaning, like, say, if you're the pastor, right? No, it's your part if you're the discipler. My part. So that so that's everybody's part. Everybody okay. has a everybody has a part A. My part involves the things I I can do to that. Oh, okay, so so yeah. so so if somebody needs guidance and they come to you, it's your responsibility to help them on their spiritual journey. Discipleship is everybody's everybody's responsibility. Right. I I know it's everybody. I just use you as yeah. you know. So yeah, so with me, yes. so, so if somebody came to me, okay, and you know, they feel that you know you're being led by God, you know, it's just that that's why it's so important that we walk up right I'm just saying because mm -hmm. if they're looking at us if they're inspired and we're causing them to stumble so their part they can miss you know like they can't misinterpret their part because we didn't um show the right way that God would want us to be in for the order for them to walk up right per se because we're not, we wouldn't be walking up right in all our, you know none's perfect I know but yes that that's it's just so important when when you seek it because there's some people that know some people that don't so if you get a new you know someone who don't know anything and they do follow after you and you're walking a little crooked right you know then that can challenge their growth yes they can stunt their growth i think it's what important that we as you always assume oh, i remember this that someone is someone is someone is watching you on this journey Mm -hmm. Whether or not they voice it to you or not, there's there because because the moment you decide, the moment you <laughs> took on Christ, there there are people watching, and so you have to always be mindful of that because you can call you don't even know they're watching and cause them to stumble because they're watching. So you just have to always be mindful that you're in that my part, whether whether a person mm -hmm. asked it or not, you're in that my part. Mm -hmm. And people, people are watching that would never say a word. The people that are watching that, that will never say a word. Can, can I just say something with that? I mean, this is more in the secular world, but um, it was I, I had the spiritual mind as I was maturing. Um, you know, we had to go through, I can't even think of the word now. It's been a little bit since I've retired, but... Um, as you know, uh, with teaching, you go through evaluations and there were more evaluations when you were earlier in the process. But uh, then there were times that they could just walk into your classroom. Come on in. Mm -hmm. You are welcome anytime because I am not here to put on display for you. Or uh, um, I do what I do because I love these children. When you speak of love, the, the, the second, first day of school, I told those children, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to be loving you. They like, look at you like, what? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> you know, and, uh, but everything then uh, um, comes from that because you want the best for them. And, but anyway, and so you're, you're doing, you're doing it because anything you do is um, for, the approval of God, <laughs> not my supervisor. Yes, you know, um, hopefully they're uh, uh, approving also. And if I would get good evaluations, but still, you know. Well, you remember how it was when I came with the hope. I said, I'm going to be loving you. They were like, well, you don't even know us. <laughs> <laughs> but, you have, but you have to continue to show that love. Yes. And, and look, 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 look at that. Look at after all that love after almost 12 years. Look, y'all actually love me back. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> well, let's let's look at let's look at the, the the five stages here. The stages that we have that we're going to talk about over the next few weeks are initially is dead, <clears throat> and we understand that when somebody is dead, there is no life in them. 
-hmm. And this is due to unbelief. Amen? Amen. And it is our job to do what in this phase? To share the gospel. Resuscitate mm -hmm. it. Yes. <laughs> you can't, we can't, like you said before, right? You can't resuscitate somebody that's dead. But so then, once they're, they're spiritually dead, then they're born again. Mm -hmm. They become spiritual infants. That's what we call babes in Christ. In this phase, their language, Behaviors and behaviors are characterized by ignorance, and we're not being we're not being funny. But but you got to be able to identify. In this phase, it is our job to share your life, share new truth, share new habits. Share throughout throughout these first two, it is our mandate to share. Then when they move to the next phase, which we call children. The language be and behavior is characterized by self-centeredness. It is our job to connect them to God, connect them to small groups or family, to connect them to their purpose. In this phase, we connect. So in the first, first two phases, we share. In the third phase, we connect. In the fourth phase, young adult, <clears throat> Language and behavior are characterized by God-centeredness, other-centeredness, other and service. In this phase, we equip them for ministry. We provide ministry opportunities. We release them to do ministry. So in this phase, we're training them to minister. When they become a parent or an adult, language and behavior are characterized by intention, to intention intentionally strategizing, we explain discipleship, the process, release to disciple others within, with your help, and we release them to disciple others alone. So we release them to be a disciple maker. We're going to go through all those phases. But before we go on tonight, we're going to talk about being spiritually dead. Keith, you got a question? I do. When I just when I, I didn't notice this when I was looking at that mm -hmm. earlier, but when I look at that chart, if you if you go back to it a little bit, I think one of the places that we fail as a church is we really drop people off right at children when they get through with the come to come to church, mm -hmm. go through the the new members class, we connect them to we connect them to oh you can sing, go to the choir, oh you this, go to that, and then we don't put. We stop the the process stops unless it if they already decided they wanted to be a minister, not minister. We mm -hmm. don't. We unfortunately, a lot of times in the church, we stop right there. I I I I, I see what you're saying. I think we stop before that. <laughs> I think I, I personally I personally feel <laughs> we stop somewhere up in here in the mm -hmm. infant stage. Because it's because 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 a lot of times, as soon as they get through with classes, we let them go. We have let them go in the past. I'm not I'm not saying it's about hope. Kind of hope we have we have certain things set up. But we as a, as a church as a whole, as soon as they leave new membership class, they're free to go. And that's just like that, that's just like Ray and Janice taking their grandbaby to um, to St. John's in the spring and leaving them there. <laughs> that, that don't make no sense, does it, Janice? Oh, not at all. Exactly. So why do we do it in the church and think it's okay? Hmm. It Please, Larry, but I'm doing the best I can. So it's easy. Yeah, it's easy for us. But the thing is, if you look at all these different phases, it requires us to work. Mm -hmm. Share the gospel. Share, whether it's share, connect, train, release. And think about it. We're looking at it just one dimensionally. If we're dealing with five or six to 20 different people, we're in different phases with 20 different people. 
Somebody might be in the share phase. Somebody might be in the connect phase. Somebody might be in the release phase. Somebody might be in the train phase. We have to be able to know this. We just can't sit them all in one class and be like, okay, we got to spend some time with them. We got to come alongside them. That's why there is a shift required. So we understand what it means to be spiritually dead. But it says in Ephesians verses 1 through 5, once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins, you used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, mm -hmm. obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. Mm -hmm. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. All mm -hmm. of us used to live that way. Amen. Following the passions, desires, and inclinations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. But God is so rich in mercy, and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that we have been saved. So he asked questions. And I just want you to think about them on tonight. What is something you did in the past? but would never do now, especially because you are a Christian. Think about it. We don't have to share that. A lot of things. A lot, it's a lot of things. A lot of things. When we did, and, and think about it, you know, I know Ray was doing a robot, but when we- <laughs> I'm still doing a robot. <laughs> I'm still doing a robot. <laughs> I'm doing the funky chicken too. <laughs> well, we, we were, I've been doing a lot of stuff. We were doing whatever we wanted to do. And the, and the, and the funny thing, I see, I can't, I can't talk about any one of you all. But I was out there doing whatever I wanted to do, and God reached out and grabbed me. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> I, I don't know about how y'all got, got got it. You know, maybe y'all came to church and got on the altar and this and that. But I, I was out there doing my thing. And yeah. God got a hold of me. Yes, indeed. And he put he put a fence around me saying, oh, you ain't going nowhere but where I'm telling you to go. So there's a lot of things I would not do and do again. And, and, and also, let me let me throw this in. There are a lot of things I won't even contemplate. I won't even give power in my mind to. That's right. Because sometimes, you know, the enemy trying to creep in. And I'd be like, look, you know, I got a class to prepare for. Lord, the Lord be like, Moses, you got something to do? I got a class to prepare for. Let me get out, go on, devil. Let me get, let me get let me get in this book. Let me get these notes written so we can get our class tonight. And so I focus, I try to focus on my purpose. Mm -hmm. I try, and, and that's why I, I I enjoy doing things like in the church, in the fellowships, and things like that, because it keeps my mind focused on him. Yes. <clears throat> And, and, and why does sin anger God? Somebody let me know that. Why does sin anger God? It's totally against who God is. Amen. There's no error in God. Mm. God is perfect. And he can't exist in sin. Yes. In what sense is spiritually dead an accurate description of life without Christ? Okay, you go ask that again, please. In what sense mm -hmm. is spiritually dead an, an accurate description of life without Christ, without faith in Christ? Mm -hmm. Separated from God. Oh, completely separated. I, 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 I personally feel like if I'm not working for God, what am I doing? <laughs> you going crazy. <laughs> what am I doing? I, I I can't I just can't see my life separated from God's purpose. I don't even want to. <clears throat> I can't see. I can't even imagine. <laughs> this would be whole. Look, I don't even know what 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 I might look like. What I might be. What I might be doing without God. I, mm -hmm. I can't even think of the state of my health. Though all of it just without. Mm -hmm. You need him. It, 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 it just it just brings you a peace. Even when you have turmoil going on in your life, 
it's a peace to know that even though the turmoil is going on, you are resting in God. Yes. And that he loves me. Yes. In the midst, in the midst of it. In the midst of it all. Not only is he loving us, but we can go on with this, but he's our refuge. He's our strength. Mm -hmm. He's our help. Woo, we we wow. keep going. <laughs> but salvation is described here as a gift, a kindness from God. Mm -hmm. In what ways is salvation like a present? Well, usually a wow. present mm -hmm. a present is given simply because you don't have to do anything for it or, or earn it. It's just given out of love. And that's how Christ, that's how our salvation came for Christ. Christ gave all he had for our salvation. Not because we deserved it, but he loved us. Amen. Amen. Sacrifice it was. A sacrifice uh, from God. You know, he uh, and, and Christ was so willing. You know, he could have gotten down off that cross as an example. But, you know, there was one point he was saying, he was looking up. But he says, no. And no matter what the people around him were doing and mocking him and so on, he didn't, he he knew that he needed to fit, fulfill those scriptures because that, that was what was between he and his father. And that's good for us to understand. No matter what's going on around us, it's our duty to fulfill our purpose. Mm-hmm. Why do sometimes we perceive our salvation to be related to our own deeds? Because uh -huh. you're ignorant. And arrogant. Mm -hmm. And there's no. nothing that we can do to earn salvation. Right. Now, I, tell, I tell you this, if, if, if we all live for 300 more years and from this day forward live sin free, we still fall short. That's right. That's right. Amen. We so, can never attain his perfection. Yes. So okay. in the text that we read, what causes one to be spiritually dead? Sin. <clears throat> yeah. And when you're yeah. spiritually dead, who do you obey? Satan. Satan. Mm-hmm. If we are born again at one time, we were all spiritually dead. Mm -hmm. well, I want, we're not going to have you share your conversion stories and struggles you have experienced along the way. We'll be here all night. We, we're running late here tonight. But think about your conversion stories. Like I said, th those conversion stories are necessary and those struggles are necessary because people are people have to be able to relate to you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> People, I want you to get this through your mind. A person that's spiritually dead cannot relate to a perfect Christian. Mm -hmm. They can't. You say, well, you know, I never seen, you know, I've been at Hope, you know, for 48 years. And, you know, by the great the grace of God, I haven't sinned in 48 years. You're lying, number one. You're just sinning right now. But people can't <laughs> relate. <laughs> <laughs> And you shouldn't well, certainly have lived. You haven't done anything either. <laughs> you, right. you, 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 not only you, 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 you they tell to be honest. Most sin feel good, or uh, uh, you enjoyed it some in some capacity. So if you say that, that you, they also can't follow you because they don't feel like well you ain't did you ain't lived. Right, but that's why God had to come get us. Because mm -hmm. so Ray, Ray said when he was doing a robot, he was happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, so so Keisha understand that I, I got that from a sermon. The preacher said he was talking about the church members not being saved. He said they was out there look, doing the robot, being unsaved and looking stupid. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, but and we do understand the consequences of being spiritually dead. Mm -hmm. you, 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 eternal damnation. Mm -hmm. Disconnection. So people in this stage, we have to understand, I want you to understand this. The people that are in this stage that you will come across have not accepted Christ as Lord and Savior. They may reject God. They may be seeking God. They may even call themselves spiritual. They may even claim to know God and call themselves Christians. 
but there's no true fruit in their lives. They may claim to know Jesus, but they do not have the Holy Spirit living in them. Y'all got that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, what should you expect from someone who is dead? Class? Push back. You're not going to, they're not going to be able to receive. Unless God touches their hearts, they're not going to be able to receive his word. He's got to do the drawing. You can also assume there's a level of ignorance. Some some people just don't even it, it they don't believe in anything. It's mm -hmm. not that they don't believe it. It's not that they don't believe in God. They just don't believe they don't believe in anything. Mm -hmm. And so it, a, a, a certain level of ignorance is also something that can be expected when people are um spiritual spiritually spiritually dead. Mm -hmm. And and, like, and this question is asked to you all. Mm -hmm. So you all set some some yeah. some expectations mm -hmm. on what to expect from those who are spiritually dead. You have to you have to know what as as believers as disciples you have to know what to expect from them. You can't expect for them to be preaching sermons, speaking in tongues, and shouting. Right, today's day. As and you, you can't, interact and with, you can't, and you can't be, you can't be beating them over the head with, with uh, scripture and, mm -hmm. and and the Bible. You got to lead. I believe you got to lead by example. Also, that's very important. Mm -hmm. Most people who are spiritually dead mm -hmm. are show me type of people. Yeah, right. right. Uh, but you might want to write that in your notes. It's not in your notes. <laughs> They are show me type people. <coughs> they show want me. you to show them, yep. not tell them. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. and, and, and let me throw this in parenthetically. I don't want to offend nobody. They don't want to see you dancing. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to hear you coming in a Honda. <laughs> 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 they want to see your life. Yeah. They want to see the Christ in you. They're constantly challenging you. I, I, I'm around people or I know of people who have not yet accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior. And there is conversation that is going forward, but I make sure that I don't become confrontational and I leave the door open for more conversation because as we speak, you know, God is working on them. He's doing the work. It's not mm. my job to do that work. It's my job to keep them engaged so they don't fall Man, away. Want to go back to the top? Hold on, let's be on page eight. Let's go back. Let's go back, Michelle. What's that? What did I say, Michelle? Pastor, I have to have a, another eye surgery. I can't oh, see what that Okay, your part. Your part in this process involves the things that you can do to assist one on their spiritual journey. Yes. And that's that's just live the life that Christ wants us to live mm -hmm. and make yourself available. Not um, Don't put yourself in harm's way, but make yourself available. Keep conversations open. Keep relationships open. And God will do the rest. Well, also, yeah. also to let, let me, and the Holy Spirit put this in. Let me, let me say this. You got to use common sense. Yeah, you, and yeah. You, Michelle says, "Don't put yourself in harm's way." Well, let's look at it like this: don't don't do good and, and it look evil. So that means so that means that um, I just you know that if you are a man and you 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 want to call yourself engaging in the discipleship process, and the person you disciple is a woman, take your wife. Mm -hmm. Amen. And the other way around. So, Amen. so it doesn't look the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Yes. Amen. 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 <clears throat> okay, but as you interact with those who are spiritually dead to God, you may encounter someone who exhibits unbelief and open rebellion. People make shake people 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 shake their fist at God. They're angry at God. Mm -hmm. They they hurt and they they feel that God is to blame. There may, there may be some level of spiritual interest or none at all. Mm -hmm. We should not be surprised 
when a spiritually dead person acts like a spiritually dead person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't be brand new. Put that in your nose. Don't act brand new when you see a spiritually dead person acting like a spiritually dead person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You pray for those people. Right. You pray but, for but, them. But, but I don't and want they, you to be caught. Died. I don't want you all to be caught off guard. Yeah, and, and spiritually dead them. folks act like spiritually dead folks. Mm -hmm. And Pastor, this also includes, and it's unfortunate, but as we as we're growing in the word, we're seeing this more and more. Spiritually dead people can be sitting next to you in the pew. Mm -hmm. and remember when we discussed the purpose driven church years ago? I don't know if you remember, but we talked about <coughs> how more than just say folks come to church. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they have an agenda. You know, mm -hmm. they do have an agenda, mm -hmm. but you can't you can't allow them to take you off course. And the one thing you all have to understand and, and, and everybody who has a church on the line that Satan comes to church every Sunday. Mm -hmm. okay. he, he might be one of your most faithful attendees. Mm -hmm. So, so be mindful. Scripture, <laughs> oh, scripture he, he, he can preach, he can sing, he can usher, he can do it all. Mm -hmm. But 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 let but just so you're not taking off guard, he's at church all the time. And so mm -hmm. you got to understand that, it, that the church folk, the church is not full of saved folks on Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. But we should not be surprised when spiritually dead folks act spiritually dead. Mm -hmm. They're acting according to their dead human nature, and they cannot change until they are made alive in Christ. Mm -hmm. So if you expect a dead person to be alive, you're going to be disappointed. Now, if you all want to go down to Roses of Maloney and expect to find the living, you're not, it's not going to happen. Only people living are the people working there. Mm. Rather than being angry or discouraged with the spiritually dead people for being dead, shouldn't we rather we deal with the problem mm. rather than their, their, their symptomatic behaviors? Luke chapter 6, verse 45, a good person produces good things from a treasury of a good heart. An evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. What you say flows from what's in your heart. So phrases that people may use in this stage. I don't believe there is a God. Mm. <laughs> the Bible is just a bunch of myths or stories. Religion is a crutch for the weak. Mm. Christians are just intolerant and homophobic people. There are many ways a person can get to God. I don't believe in hell. People just make their own hell. I've been a good person, so when I die, everything will be okay. I'll take my chances with the big man upstairs. And let me throw this in parenthetically. You write this in your notes. Goodness does not equal salvation. Does not. There are a lot of good people busting hell wide open. Another thing they'll say, there's no absolute right or wrong. If something is right for you, it might not be right for me and vice versa. I'm spiritual, but I don't connect with any one religion. <clears throat> Recognizing these phrases are key so that we can know where a person stands. We're not to judge them or condemn them, but it helps us to, to pray and respond and to understand what part Jesus wants us to play in their lives. Y'all got me? Mm -hmm. Begin to the home stretch. Just as a teacher, Janice, mm -hmm. will assess a student, amen, Janice? Amen. To, to better grasp where he or she needs help, mm -hmm. a disciple can use these phrases to assess a disciple or a potential disciple to better understand where he or she needs help in their journey towards spiritual spiritual maturity in Christ. So you have to be able to assess where they are. We're not saying like we like we stated earlier, we're not judging them morally. We're just evaluating them so we know how to deal with them. Appropriate place to begin. Mm -hmm. 
the key concept that we have to understand is that a spiritually dead person does not have the life of Jesus within. And they're going to act like spiritually dead folks. Mm -hmm. This the, the way they act is because they have no faith in Jesus as their Savior and Lord. Mm. And, and sometimes, we, like I said, we can't act brand new when people act like they don't know Jesus when they don't know Jesus. So what are the needs of people who are spiritually dead? First and foremost, they need love through honest friendships and relationships with believers. Remember we said our focus is authentic discipleship and the methodology is relational. Mm -hmm. They need to have honest friendships and honest relationships with those who believe in Jesus Christ. We have to understand we often preach our best sermons not with, with our words, not our lives all the time. So we have to, in turn, preach our best sermons with our lives. Y'all got that? You got what I was saying with that? Mm -hmm. Amen. They need to be introduced to Jesus and to see the life of the gospel lived out, not beat over the head with it. They need answers to their questions about the Bible, God and Christianity. Not our answers to our questions. Amen? Amen. They need a clear explanation of the gospel and an invitation to trust and follow Jesus. If, they, if they're going to receive a clear explanation of the gospel, we have to clearly understand the gospel. And what we call this here is pre-conversion discipleship. It all needs to be done in an environment fostered by love and by prayer. The good news is that if one who is spiritually dead responds, he or she can be born again. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said, what do you mean? How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Mm -hmm. Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and of spirit. Are there any questions? Hey, listen. Hey, yeah. Sister Sharon. <laughs> any questions? Was this worth your time on tonight? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And what we're going to do, we're going to continue to navigate through chapter number two. So we all, so we look at all, so we probably look at maybe two to three uh, other ones next week, but we want to go through. So if you got your books, you can still catch up. Right at, right at the beginning of chapter two. Yes. Yeah, so where did you send the link to uh, the book? My, um, it's in the chat, but I can I can send it to you. In the chat? No, 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 please. I'm sorry. Could you send it to my? Um, could you text it to me? I can. Cannot. I can. Oh, okay. Thank you. You oh, look as many texts as you get from me. You think I can't text you? <laughs> <laughs> I, but you know what? <laughs> you said I can't. You know, I I would have to accept that. <laughs> It, 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 Keisha, they, I, they, everybody on the line get multiple texts from me probably every day. Yes, <laughs> yes. And Jan is probably more than anybody else because she did get the Sunday school stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'll send it to you after class. Yeah, that would be perfect. Thanks. Okay. I have to do my... I'm going to delete all those old Sunday school books from over the years. I don't need to keep them, uh, but he said that that's not what's really using up my storage. It's okay. my it is. I just want to make a comment. Um, okay. <clears throat> our sister Keisha put in the chat, it is better to leave a position unfilled than to fill it with a person mm -hmm. who isn't ready. She, she put it I, nicely. 
That is so wonderful. That's so true. Because if you fill those positions with those who are spiritually dead or who are not matured enough to disciple others, what can happen is their influence will spill over and you're going to have a divided uh, church because there will be certain people who are following that way, being that they're in leadership, and then there'll be other people who are following the truth. And that way is always the easiest way. <laughs> so you fall into it. Even people who might be walking in the way of the truth. You know, if you're responded to in such a way where it's, um, mm -hmm. it's harsh and you don't know God the way you need to know God, there's a possibility you mm -hmm. want to clap back. But well, Keisha, I do like the way you paraphrase that. <laughs> it was good. It was good. No, no, I, no, I, I like I like the way she, she paraphrased that very nicely because it was a little bit more raw when it was given over the pulpit. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Sometimes it's got to come out the way it's got to come out. <laughs> My God. I try to speak in love. I try to speak in love. <laughs> no, no, and Keisha didn't give it over the pulpit. Let me say she did. It wasn't Keisha that gave that. That was Mr. Jo with Mr. Johnson, right? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yes yes but i like the way you put that that's very nice amen amen <laughs> any other questions or concerns is everybody is everybody participating in the reading yeah. good 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 like i said it's not too tough read it's too tough but it's good information and i think that we'll grab you know by going hitting it this way we're gonna we're gonna grasp, you know, why there's a need for a shift and how to shift and to equip others to shift. Mm. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hold you all. Everybody, if all hearts and minds are clear, let's see who we got on the line. I'm gonna ask MIT Belchers to close us out in prayer. <sighs> Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight grateful. We ask that you just keep our hearts open and our minds open and our spirits alert. Lord God, there's a lot that we're coming up against, but Father, you are our ultimate teacher. You are the one who shows us the way. We have to stay connected to you, as Pastor said. Stay connected to the vine. Stay in the word, Lord God, and you'll continue to guide us in your way. You'll continue to order our steps. Father God, I just want to Again, tell you how thankful I am. Everything in life is not always the way we want it to be, Father, but we know that you're in charge of all things. So I just want to thank you again for everything that is happening in my life right now. Lord God, you're causing me to lean and depend on you even more. You're causing me to release my self-pride and my self uh, reliance and just be open to you and where you want me to go and which direction you'll have me to be in. So I thank you for that. Lord God, I pray good health and I pray good health and I pray joy and love over everyone that's on this line tonight, Father. Continue to feed us till we want no more. Fill our cup in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If y'all want to, before y'all go to bed, go on text messages and let people know we had a great class tonight. Amen. 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 You all have a good night. If y'all got any questions, y'all can give me a call on tomorrow. I'll be in the office. Amen. Good night, all. Good Amen. Night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.